Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about hyponatremia. So, hyponatremia is what is hyponatremia? Is uh, the when the blood sodium level it drops down below normal. So, what is normal uh, blood sodium level? It ranges between 135 to 145 millimole per liter. Okay. So, uh, when we study hyponatremia, there is range mild, moderate, and severe. So, the mild hyponatremia it ranges between 130 to 134 millimole per liter, moderate 125 to 129 millimole per liter, and profound severe below 125 millimole per liter. So, based on the severity, we start with the treatment. So, when uh, um, this uh, serum sodium level it goes drops down from like less than 115 millimole per liter, that is the uh, point when uh, uh, patient will start showing the neurological symptoms so that time what happens this intracellular osmotic fluid it starts shifting to the this brain cells and it causes uh, brain edema okay okay fine so this one concept when whenever we uh, treat uh, whenever any patient comes with hyponatremia it, it's not just hyponatremia there will be some other disorders or disease so there's something called uh, total body water that we need to know so total body water is uh, is like you know that the water is two third of our body weight is just water so this uh, intracellular and extracellular water together it is called as total body water so this also plays very important role when uh, the patient is having hyponatremia like which type of hyponatremia the patient is having so it is it also depends on the total body water so that contributes almost uh, 45 to 65 percent of the body weight of uh, adult okay then uh, how to calculate there are many other formulas there are many formulas like uh, you can just uh, do it online so there's one very simple is 0.6 into the body weight of the individual so that's how you will get your total body water and it also depends on your uh, diet and uh, your uh, physical activity because this fitness fitness freak they will have different kind of um, um, uh, diet and uh, uh, they'll be taking lots of proteins and other nutrients so that also varies so this is something very uh, simple formula to know otherwise there are other scientific formulas available fine so what happens when the blood sodium uh, it goes down below normal so there will be too much of water so this water means that i'm talking about total body water okay so that time what it does it dilutes the sodium okay so when there is sodium is getting diluted what happens there will be uh, swelling inside the cells so how the swelling is happening because water starts entering inside the cell okay so uh, that's how the cell starts swelling up and uh, there will be um, if it is entering inside the brain cells there will be cerebral edema or and, and when there is cerebral edema so obviously there will be some neurological disorders or it dam it changes the mental status and it can also cause seizure or if the patient has seizure along with the hyponatremia so uh, again the further complications will happen and uh, along with that uh, there will be the swelling in the lower limb because of the fluid overload also it can uh, uh, get accumulated in the, your abdomen so it can cause ascites because this also associated with uh, the liver disorders not I, when I will explain about the risk factors that time I will explain so okay and the swelling and can also further like if, when it is like left untreated then can also lead to coma okay so um, before explaining the risk factors and signs and symptoms I'll, try, I'll explain the types of uh, this uh, hyponatremia so there are two categories one is uh, based on the volume status in the body and second is based on the osmolarity so based on the osmolarity there are uh, three types one is uh, hypertonic hyponatremia then uh, isotonic hyponatremia and uh, hypotonic hy hyponatremia so uh, uh, among these three this third type hypotonic uh, hyponatremia is considered as true hyponatremia Okay, so based on the volume status, first is euvolemic hyponatremia. So what happens in euvolemic? The total body water, it increases, but the sodium concentration, it remains normal. Uh, then hypervolemic hyponatremia in that, 
uh, if you compare the uh, increase in total body water and increase in sodium so that time the total body water increases larger than the increase in sodium concentration then third category is hypovolemic hyponatremia so again here we are comparing decrease so the uh, total body water decrease is greater than the decrease in sodium then a uh, fourth type is dilutional dilutional is uh, because of water intoxication when we drink too much of water which is not required so that time uh, all this and without adding the electrolytes so all these electrolytes gets diluted and we develop dilutional hyponatremia okay and uh, another is hyper osmolar because it is because of the low level of all the electrolytes it could be sodium potassium and other electrolytes along with that the nutrient deficiency and deficiency in protein okay so these are the types of hyponatremia then what are the risk factors uh, it could be because of kidney failure so if any kidney patient is coming we usually uh, see hyponatremia they try managing the potassium and sodium level correctly okay heart failure if patient is having any kind of surgery then uh, any disease which affects uh, your liver or lungs or heart or, or kidney okay and along with these risk factors there are some reasons of having hyponatremia first is any disease okay like heart kidney liver lung disease uh, along with that use of excessive use of diuretics then uh, drinking alcohol uh, surgery or use of any kind of antidepressants okay that can lead to uh, development of this hyponatremia okay so what are the signs and symptoms so patient will uh, having this muscle muscle cramps weakness nausea and vomiting um lethargic and low low in energy along with that headache and if it is becoming severe then the mental status changes and there will be a uh, swallowing dysfunction when the mental status is changing and all that time like if the patient is having stroke or any other seizure or, or any other neurological disorders then the patient can also report to this bulbular palsy which is characterized by dysphagia or weakness in the facial uh, muscle or tongue muscle which usually we see in the patient with stroke then um, spastic uh, quadriparesis this is something when the limbs will start like weakening of the limbs so that is called as spastic quadriparesis this is also affected by uh, sodium uh, level in the body okay then how do we diagnose hyponatremia first is uh, check for the uh, blood sodium level if it is decreasing then along with that we also measure the okay measure the uh, uh, potassium level and what is the creatinine level okay along with the sodium level because we need to know like what is the level of other electrolytes in the body okay so when we check the uh, sodium level along with the this potassium and creatinine so that indirectly it gives a measure of total body water in the body so we can categorize which type of hyponatremia the patient is having okay then also we check for the serum osmolarity osmolarity so there's another formula to calculate serum osmolarity then um, urine osmolarity and also we uh, check the urine sodium concentration fine this is the diagnostic parameters then uh, after that uh, coming to the treatment so uh, i have uh, i'll explain the treatment based on two guidelines one is american and another one is european guidelines so this one is uh, according to the european guideline the first one uh, okay so if the hyponatremia is acute means less than 48 hours so so if it is uh, based on the symptoms if it is severe so we usually treat this uh, moderate and severe okay so uh, the severe one is uh, bolus 150 ml of uh, 3% sodium chloride over 20 minutes three times and keep on checking the sodium concentration okay and if it is okay this is according to the european guideline the american was one is also a bit similar little difference bolus 3% sodium chloride 100 ml nacl over 10 minutes okay so here we are giving 150 ml here we are giving uh, 100 ml that is the only difference and here over 20 minutes here we are giving over 10 minutes then moderate uh, bolus 150 ml of 3% sodium chloride once over 20 minutes okay then here uh, same 
as this one is there, 3 percent infusion, continuous infusion of sodium chloride. That is according to American guideline. Okay, so this is if it is the onset is acute. If the onset is chronic means more than 48 hours. So that time, uh, if the patient is symptomatic, that time you give 10 millimole per liter in first 24 hours, then go with the 8 millimole per liter. Okay. Uh, okay, if this is according to European guideline, according to American guideline, uh, try to manage uh, 4 to 8 millimole per liter. Okay, there's something called, uh, before explaining this, there's something called ODS, that is osmotic uh, demyelination syndrome. So, when we overcorrect the um, sodium level, so there will be sudden rush in the sodium in the body, so that can damage the brain cells okay or the, that the myelin sheath in the brain cells okay so patient can develop ods so if the the physician or any uh, healthcare professional if they identify the patient is at higher risk of develop, developing this ods that time they give uh, 4 to 6 millimole uh, of uh, sodium chloride okay or if uh, per liter or if the patient is having the lower risk of developing the ods then they will increase the little bit concentration 4 to 8 millimole per liter okay okay then asymptomatic then go for the from 10 you go go with 8 millimole per liter okay during every 24 hours and then continuous monitoring of the sodium then if it is according to american guideline if the patient is asymptomatic and having chronic hyponatremia then give 10 to 12 millimole per liter in 48 hours fine okay so there are two things uh, one is the normal saline and another one is this three percent sodium chloride okay so this difference is the if you uh, see one liter of normal saline it has 154 milli equivalent of sodium and if you see three percent of sodium chloride it will have 500 513 milli, milli equivalent of sodium so that's why we like we are specifically mentioning what type of sodium chloride we are giving to the patient okay because there's different in, difference in the concentration of sodium fine okay and this three uh, percent uh, sodium chloride it is called as hypertonic uh, solution okay um, then there are other treatments as well so if there is uh, hypovolemic hyponatremia so i explain about the types of hyponatremia so if there is hypovolemic hyponatremia so that time uh, isotonic saline or balanced solution can be given at the rate of like 2.5 to 1 milli ml uh, per kg uh, uh, per kg per hour okay if there is uh, if there is hypovolemic hyponatremia okay if it is euvolemic and it is associated with SIADH. SIADH is nothing but uh, if there is any syndrome, uh, so full form of syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormonal secretion. Okay, if there is any abnormality with the antidiuretic hormone, that is nothing but ADH. So that time also can patient can develop euvolemic hyponatremia. So there is a first line, second line therapy. First line is always fluid restriction. Okay, uh, they can also restrict the fluid to like uh, 500 ml per day like that. Okay, and second line uh, lithium, and along with that uh, this demeclocycline, which is not, which is anti antibiotic, but demeclocycline has also shown benefit uh, in improving the condition when the patient is high because it suppresses the this uh, ADH secretion. It has some um, mechanism how it suppresses the ADH so it has some effect on that lithium and demeclocycline so this is recommended along with that go with the loop diuretics and oral sodium chloride tablets are also available so go with that okay that is second line okay so hypovolemic euvolemic then hypervolemic hypervolemic again uh, restrict the fluid and there's one drug that is Vaptans, that is Tolvaptan, that is V2 receptor antagonist. So that also helps in, um, it, it is a ADH antagonist, Tolvaptan. So ADH, uh, its function is a water retention. So it, re it retains the water, so it will uh, block that mechanism, Tolvaptan. So there won't be any water retention in the body, okay? Along with that, demeclocycline, fine? Okay, so there's one note, 
so whenever you are treating uh, uh, symptomatic hyponatremia like sim symptoms such as uh, symptomatic means uh, because of some underlying disease like uh, she's a uh, or any severe neurological disorder always go with the hypertonic 3% saline okay uh, if you give the normal saline that can further uh, it, it can worsen the condition if it is associated with the uh, adh hormone if the it, if this that hi, that hyponatremia is because of uh, adh and it comes in the category falls in the category of euvolemic hyponatremia that time always it is recommended uh, from according to the european guideline it is always recommended go with the 3% sodium chloride solution okay so i told one condition ods so whenever we are correcting the uh, sodium level so um, do not go more than 12 millimole per liter in a day so here somewhere i explained about yeah 10 to 12 millimole per liter in 48 hours okay so the maximum you can give is 12 not more than that because if you suddenly if you're giving uh, uh, sodium or any iv fluid so uh, there will be sudden change in the electrolytes and that that can uh, affect the brain cells so that is the uh, over correction of uh, uh, hyponatremia so that time if the uh, hyponatremia is over corrected and it is causing ods or having the chance of developing ods so that is that is something called uh, medical emergency along with the ods the patient will have this uh, uh, continuous this uh, diuresis so that time uh, dexamethasone 4 mg uh, 6 hourly for 24 hours is given to uh, manage the situation um, uh, when there is over correction of uh, sodium means what is happening here over correction of sodium means the patient uh, the body is having very less fluid no so when the body is having very less fluid so the salt concentration is increasing means from hyponatremia they are shifting towards hyponatremia so this is about uh, hyponatremia thank you